When I went off to college in the late 80s, off to California, coming from a, the Midwest, Ohio, I was in a total shock, culture shock, everything. I did not realize the big difference coming from the Midwest at that particular time and just the such of the diversity and everything that was in the West Coast. And I was college, our dorms wasn't built yet, and I was living off campus and eventually came with six roommates. How diverse. I was the black guy. We had an Italian guy named Paul. And we had two surfers, two white guys. And then we had a Filipino and we had a Mexican. And we would eat the various foods of our cultures and different music when we had parties and all types of things. And we learned from one another. And I was like, wow, this is totally different from what it was being in the Midwest at that time. And really understanding too, like, wait a minute, the racism is not as it, as it you know is back home and things. And I was like, wow, what a, what a difference, what a difference. And I'll add this in before I get to my main point. You know, some people, a lot of these people that listen to some of these media outlets and, and, and the fear mongering and things that is going on out there, they have, they, they live in a bubble. They haven't gotten outside, of, you know, of their, of their bubble. I had, I had not, I grew up, we were poor. So I was, we never had a vacation outside of the state of Ohio. Never. So I never got to experience anything else. So for me, it was a total culture shock. And it's like that for some people. They are stuck in certain parts of their communities or whatever, whatever. And they see what they see on some of these outlets. And they begin, you know, fear. And, and oh my God, it, it's doomsday. And the world is collapsing. And, and they're just so scared. And, and there's a lady at my job where... They, she knows the area and there's a re Chinese restaurant. She's, she's familiar. Good food. There's uh, several stores in this area. Oh, I can't go over there. What's that or that? I'm like, you just, just don't go over there in the middle of the night because there's plenty of business people. People go there during the day, get the food. I'm there all the time. And I'm like, it's not that bad. But she's from a part of town where, you know, this is a small community and she's kind of uh, scary, scared of everything. I just had to add that in, this message. So if you're still with me, I'm sorry. But I just wanted to put that in. Because the point I'm trying to make is, when you have roommates, there's some good and there's some bad. <laughs> now, while we had all these roommates and things like that, and many of you know, you know, it's like, I'm glad my sons and stuff don't deal with roommates. They got their own place. And that's what I tell, you know, my daughter, like, you know, it's very... College, when you're living on the dorms and things, that's one thing. But, you know, having a roommate is a whole different thing. It, it's, it can be highly risky. And eventually, people don't pay their bills. And next thing you know, they're asking for money. I, I, I give it to your next pay. Or, you know, I'm a little short on the rent this time. Or they're eating your groceries because they couldn't afford no groceries. And the, before you know it, the tensions begin to start to rise. And things like that. And I and I realized, like, wait a minute, you know, I, I can't keep picking up the slack here. We don't have no food there. And I remember my auntie that raised me. I remember we were just starving. And uh, my aunt UPS does uh, me a box of food so I could be able to have something to eat. And I'm sharing it with my roommates. And everybody's eating, eating, eating. We're all starving as college kids. And, you know, eventually we fall behind in the rent. And eventually you realize, like, wait a minute, where's my pair of jeans? Where's my shirt? Things like that. They're wearing your clothes and all of that. Freeloading. And that's what's happening in this time. I just thought about this. That's why I named this message. These so-called self-appointed YouTube prophets and teachers, they are nothing but spiritual freeloaders or what they are. They are using people. They are using people. They are the ones that are sitting up there in this Brandon Biggs guy that then blew up all of a sudden to where people think that this guy is some real prophet of some sort. And we're going, I got to, I'm, I'm going to specifically do a video on him to show that this guy is being used by the devil. And I'm going to deal with that on another message. But these people that these so-called, the 
self-appointed messengers of the Almighty, if what you want to call them. And uh, 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 they sit there, they're using people. They sitting back and they're telling you, well, all of these big events are happening and all of these different things. And I had seen this. I saw that. That's happened. This or that. And, and all of these different types of things. And they're giving you all of these different words. And then they're, but the, what they're doing is they're just sitting back and they're dumping all of this spirituality onto you. So it's like they're tossing a, a, a many times a work-based uh, uh, theology upon you, works ba a works-based faith. You know, you got to go do this. You got to pray a little bit harder and, uh, and pray this type of way in order to get what you need to get. You know, everything is with these people. And there's nothing with praying harder, studying harder, and things like that. But if you notice... A lot of these messengers, a lot of these self-appointed pastors, self-people that you see on this YouTube platforms, you know, it's always what you can get from God. It's always about what you're trying to get. Just like as God is this genie that you can call him up and it's always we're going to get this, we're going to get that. And then it's always we're going to go higher, 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 higher. It's the, if you notice that, there's all, always, we're higher, higher. Marcus Rogers is good for that. We're going to go to this next level or whatever. And we're going to have this unity. And all of a sudden, you know, we're going to go through, there's going to be revivals everywhere, which is, you know, doesn't line up with the scripture because the scriptures didn't say anything about revivals and, you know, as we move towards the last days and things. Nothing about revivals. It says falling away is what's going to be happening. But these people, they're freeloaders. They're dumping all of these things on you. No, you didn't get baptized the right way. You got baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's not how you got get baptized. You're supposed to be baptized in Jesus' name. Are you filled with the Spirit? You know, you'll hear them talk like this. You, you, you're not filled with the Spirit. You get Marcus Rogers. I, 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 I speak bilingual. This is what Marcus Rogers will say. I speak bilingual. You know, I speak a heavenly language. You know, bragging uh, as if the... Uh, gift of tongues is the, the most eloquent gift out of all of it. Because if you supposedly have this gift, you're going to have a more special connection than God than the next guy. And they're, you're not going to, they're freeloaders. So they're setting back, flipping through, you know, as we talk about Troy Black, he goes into the dark room. He tells his wife, take the kids. Hey, go upstairs, keep them busy. I'm down here. I need to make some videos so we can eat next week. So that's what he does. And he goes into his dark, smoky room and goes through his phony journals and, and, and come up with these dates. If you notice a lot of them, they always back on April 23rd, I had this vision of whatever, whatever. Back on May, whatever. These dates are, but the Lord told me not to release it. That's what they'll say. And the dates are all over the place. And they, you know, it's always this. You know, these uh, past dates and then, you know, and I, I figured they do that to confuse people. And then Troy supposed to, I got them all lined up on my channel so that you can see the prophecies that's come to pass. These folks are freeloaders. They're dumping things on the people and, and taking advantage of them, taking advantage of them more so uh, of, of their uh, goodwill and many of people. And many people are given to them. Troy Black has raised pretty much, he's probably hit the mark now, the 20,000. Last one I looked a week or two ago, I think it was like 18,000 something dollars. 20, he won $20,000 to make a Trump documentary. And because he says that Trump is more so, as some of these false teachers say, is appointed by God and this, that, and that. And he's nothing but a nationalist. And I'm starting to wonder and, and I am mentioning this to another subscriber. Some of these people, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to put the survey up for that. Nationalists, Christian nationalists, white nationalists. You know, we're not, we're not getting into racism or anything on this channel because we don't deal with that, but we're just keeping it real. White nationalists, crack Christian nationalists. Is there a difference? Is there really a difference? Because they are really similar. But I wanna, I'm going to take a survey. I want to see what you guys put in there. So I'm going to put the thing up in the community tab so you guys can go at it with that and see what you think. But Troy Black, you know, I, the Lord is this. I just, as I examine him, 
and, and, and the discernment kicks in more and more with some of these people. And that's the problem that's lacking with many people that follow these people. They're setting back and you don't even realize it. These people are freeloaded. They have taken a place within your heart, within your mind. You've allowed these types of false messengers to take residence and set within your heart, set within your mind, and causes you to be more dependent on them because I, like I call them, YouTube psychics. They want you to come to them so that you can tell, so they can tell you about the future is what they're doing. They're like a, like I said, a psychic. All of these different weird messages of things and somehow they'll take it and twist the scriptures. And people will argue, and argue well, Troy Black is, you know, he reads the scriptures or all the other ones. They're always saying they read the scriptures. You know who else read the scriptures? Who else read the scriptures? When Jesus went into the wilderness and the devil was following right behind him into the wilderness, what happened in the wilderness? What happened? The devil spoke, was talking, having conversations with Jesus. And what was he doing? Using the word of God and twisting it. And that's what these people are doing. So just because somebody reads the word of God, like a Troy Black or whoever, when they're quoting scripture or just reading it word for word, I mean, anybody can do that. Pick up and start reading through a chapter and say some things and then try to highlight it or whatever. That don't make them somebody that's been sent by God. That don't mean nothing because the devil knows more scripture than all of us where he, he knows it inside out and he knows how to twist it. And that's why he's able to trap many people. He knows how to trap. He's been around longer than us. He knows the operation. He knows our weakness. He knows your weakness. He knows what to do to suck you in and to bait you and get you just like he was trying to get Jesus and tempting him, you know, trying to tell him, you know, Jesus hungry. No, Jesus was hungry and trying to get him to turn the, the stones to bread and, and ask him to jump off. You know, talking about the angels can come save them and trying to twist Psalms 91 and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, and then asking him to bow down, you know, all of these kings, you know, bow down and, and, and worship me. You know, you know, all of that was coming into effect. And what was happening is we have to make sure, you know, that you don't key in on one particular scripture and take that without understanding the total context. That's the problem with a lot of these people. They don't know the context of anything because they're not supposed to be teaching because they're wolves in sheep's clothing, many of them. And, and that's what it boils down to. And they're out of context. They'll take one particular scripture and, and out of that particular scripture, you need to know the whole Bible in context. You don't get to take something and pull it out and try to twist it. This is how cults start. So when you have people talking about all this, all this angel talk and all of this talking to angels and all of these different things that they're doing and things, and who's who? Who we? I think we made it on another particular video where Joseph Smith claimed that the angels came to him, and here we have millions and millions of Mormons. Thanks to one person talking about speaking to angels. So, you know, it, it, it happens, you know, it, this is where it's dangerous. And many people, you need to get your hand, head out the sand. So these freeloaders, while they're sitting back with their feet kicked up, cashing the money because many people donate into their ministry, false ministries, buy merchandise, doing whatever they're selling, or, or whatever, and just like it's Troy Black, I mean, this is supposed to be some documentary or propaganda deal, whatever he's got. He's probably going to buy a car or take the kids to Disney World, do whatever. It's something going else going on because they're all schemers and scammers and nothing but people that have, you know, need to repent. We, you know, we'll, we put them up on the prayer list, but you know what? We know that God will deal with them in due time. But at the meantime, what this channel is about is warning people that have stumbled across these types of people. Because if you come across a channel and you see somebody reading 
scripture and and Troy Black he's crying and, and many of them they're crying and they're some people them. listening all you really need is you need to you need to get down on your knees and you need to say God I'm I'm tired of playing games with you I I need I need the real Jesus in my life these great things and they seem so humble and things or they bait you in with a thumbnail with this particular message and, and you think it's going to talk about that and then it doesn't. And they're all, they're really good for that. And then they go off into a different tangent and act like they're this Bible teacher and things like that. You subscribe, you come along, you become dependent. And in the meantime, the devil has gotten a foothold in your life. And now he's, you've opened the door for the devil. You give him what that foothold to allow these types of people to come in. You, you, laid the foundation for havoc to begin to wreak in your life. And that's how it goes. So you, you know, many of you are in great danger of destroying yourself, destroying your family on top of it. You know, if you want to be ignorant and hard headed and jump off the cliff with these folks, do it by yourself. But don't you take your wife, take your brother, sister, your kids, your grandma, your neighbor, your best friend. Don't take them with you. That, that, you know, that, don't take them with you. You go on off there if you want to go off on that tangent with these people after you've been warned. But don't you dare. And that's what burns me up. And it's a righteous anger. And yes, I'm fired up, as you know. I know I'm not mad, but it's a righteous anger. It burns me up that so many of these people, they're set, they got kids in their household, family members, that they're, they are the ones destroying their household and everyone around them because they refuse to repent and want to follow these types of people. Well, you know what? You know, like I, I've been saying, God's judgment is here. He is on the move. And these people that are going around with this little games that they're playing and things like that and trying to twist everything and dragging politics and jumping into the political arena and utilizing anything they can and things. You know, God, you know, we already know wh how he deals with people. And I don't want to be on God's bad side. So that's all I have for today. Evangelism for God is a channel where we talk about issues the church run away from. My name is Maurice Braxton. And what else do we do? Punch Satan in between the chops. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.